pre-COVID, the anxiety, you know, was, was roaring up and stress was roaring up. I mean, when you look at the country data and now you think of what's happening as we're still in the thick of COVID, it just depends on where we are, you know, around the world. I think to your point about logistics and ensuring the continuity of the food supply, all of a sudden you had a, a different population of employees who are kind of managing that, um, you know, 24 seven. And then you had another part of the population of employees who um, play different roles and how do you keep everyone engaged? And, you know, from my end, what I just appreciated about our organization is we continue just to find ways to connect each other, you know, whether it was a communication, the simplicity of a communication hub for people to post kind of what they're up to, what they're doing to internally, our team kind of contributed to another initiative that our HR team has always championed called CMEP Frano, which was about kind of bringing people together around food and seeing the health benefits of that and watching that inspiration kind of flow through the organization. So for me, it was just about how do we inspire mindsets uh, in a really positive way to keep, keep people engaged and uh, from my perspective, find the hidden sources of stress. Um, stress is one of those words that I think gets underestimated in the ability for people to con contribute. We're talking about design and creativity. I mean, it can shrink our ability to be able to kind of be a part of that process versus an expansive opportunity. And I think we've paid um, a lot of attention to the impact uh, on employees and within teams, right? I mean, my team is on a variety of life stages and you have employees with kids who are young and want to be a part of the conversation. And I've just seen the company really rally around this convergence of work and home in a really positive way. And so I don't know that that'll ever go back to the way it originally did. I don't think people want it to go back to, to this original idea of we have to be in the office for, you know, for FaceTime. And so I'm seeing already the, the review of different techniques and tools that we use and what's, what's the most engaging way that we can think about our way of working and, and what really worked well and how can we continue that. So anyhow, in the spirit of just anxiety and stress, I think a focus on this enabling people to maintain the personal care, if you will. I saw one of the questions around exercise um, and cooking. I mean, when you look at the data and when you see where people want to take control of their own personal health, um, exercise tends to be at the top of the list, moving, um, but cooking for yourself and for your family and, and others is right there next to it. And so I think we're looking for ways to, um, really amplify those opportunities and make it easier for people to either go into their pantry, you know, Barella has an amazing recipe builder that you can pick a protein, you can pick a cuisine, you can pick this and you all of a sudden you've got five different amazing meals on your, you know, for lunch or for dinner. And um, anyhow, I'm just uh, impressed with how people have been able to stay engaged and keep focused. Um, and I would like to say it's like that energy that we're bringing to it is creating urgency at a time that um, is really surreal, right, for, for a lot of people. So um, any way we can uncover invisible stress and turn that into something that's positive, I think is, is, a, is advancement.